Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they're working on. Today, we have Doris and Andrew. Hi, please tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Thanks so much for having us, Alexi. So my name is Doris. I'm the founder and CEO of Linea, which is the company behind Linea Pi that we're demonstrating today. Uh, very high level, the idea for Linea Pi is we have noticed that data scientists do a lot of pipeline creation for production purposes, for continuous development, but there's a pretty strenuous process today due to a lack of uh, really robust and smart tooling. So Linea Pi is really uh, coming in to fill that gap. And at a very high level, I just maybe, um, before, after Andrew introduced himself, I wanna talk through some of the implications for the tool. Yeah, uh, hi everyone, I'm Andrew. I'm a software engineer here at uh, Linea, working on Linea Pi. I'm gonna be running through the main part of the demo, but uh, first back to Doris. <laughs> awesome, uh, thanks so much, Andrew. Uh, so yeah, as I was mentioning, a big gap that Linea is trying to fill is the problem of creating pipelines for data science. And today the biggest, uh, you know, first of all, data pipelines are really essential because data scientists are working with very complex workflows, right? It's not just a single step. You have things like uh, feature engineering, model training, evaluation. These are things usually uh, develop one at a time and then they need to be stitched back together. And that's why we have these pipelines. The biggest challenge with pipelines today are a couple of things. One is that data science is very iterative. So that means, you know, uh, we probably have like hundreds of lines of code for development, but really only a tenth of that, if not, you know, if even that actually makes it into the pipeline. So there's a whole process of like identifying what's relevant. And then there's also the um, <clears throat> explicit uh, translation or refactoring of your code into these, uh, pipeline steps, right? Like conceptually, we have all this feature engineering, this model training, but you need to be able to learn a new framework and then actually explicitly define these steps in those frameworks. And once these pipelines are running, there's also the question of like, how to attract versions, how to attract the you know different outputs. And there's also the complex relationships between the pipelines that are really hard to track today. So these are some challenges that we see with pipelines and Linea Pi comes in with a very elegant solution that literally takes just two lines of code to solve all of these problems all at once, right? So very specifically, we are able to automatically refactor development code to create these really uh, well-defined tasks. We're also able to automatically construct data pipelines from raw Python code without forcing data scientists to learn a new framework like Airflow or Kubeflow or Argo, right? We're actually gonna show all of them today. And then the other thing is we're automatically tracking lineage. So data science that don't need to annotate that these data assets are related to each other in this and that way, these pipelines are related to each other, right? So I do wanna show one slide to kind of just, um, kind of give us an overview of how the tool works because it does sound like magic and there's a lot going on. So the very high level experience, you import Linea Pi, the Python library into your data science development environment. And as soon as you do that, we are captured, we're basically analyzing your code as you go and analyzing your runtime to be able to build this Linea graph uh, in the background that is allows us to understand the workflow at a semantic level. And what this graph allows us to do is once data scientists arrive at these um, steps, right, like well-defined uh, data, you know, well, clean data pipe, uh, data data sets, trained models, evaluated models, then data scientists can use this very simple API called save and point it to the data, data artifact that they are interested in saving and when it automatically captures everything from the code to the execution context and to the raw value itself into a single linear artifact object. And data scientists can then use these objects to create pipe pipelines automatically using Linea in these target frameworks. And again, Andrew will be demoing how this can be done very easily for many different frameworks. Great, cool. and over to Andrew. Yeah, yeah thank you, George. Excited to see the demo. Yeah, so let's just jump right into it then. Um, let me share my screen. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, basically the uh, foundation for a lot of what LineaPy does uh, comes from the working in the Jupyter Notebooks. So a lot of data scientists do their work in Jupyter Notebooks. And uh, this is basically where the magic happens. 
So for the demo today, we're going to be going through an example workflow that a data scientist, you know, working um, just, you know, normally might go through. So uh, they're going to get a housing data set and they're going to do some exploratory data analysis some feature engineering, um, train a model and evaluate that model. And at the end here, uh, we're going to show basically how um, after all the uh, linear pi code capture and graph uh, making happens, how easy it is to build pipelines out of the work that we presented. Um, yeah, so let's just dive right into it. So the first thing that uh, you know all open source projects uh, go through is um, uh, an install, and linear pi is super easy to install uh, just through pip. I'm pretty sure I have it installed here already, so this is going to be pretty fast. And then uh, to use it in the notebook, it's also really simple. Like Doris said uh, in her slides, import linear pi, and immediately um, the code tracing is on, and um, basically you have access to all of the magic that we provide already. So uh, yeah, let's just dive right into the um, the code here. I'm going to go through this a little bit quickly because the exact uh, details of the code is are, is not super important. Um, mostly here that we're just uh, loading our training data, and then uh, we're going to be doing some EDA here, and some you know really cool uh, plots are going to show up like this. You know, uh, just simulating what normal data science work looks like here. Um, do, 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 do. tons of uh, you know amazing work going on, right? And then here is the key part, which is um, let's just say uh, as part of our work, we've you know cleaned some training data, and we are confident that this training data set contains all the features that we want. So uh, LinearPy allows us to save this as an artifact, uh, and what this means is basically we're tagging a a piece of our graph, and uh, you know saving the value of this training data so that not only it can be used later, but we also understand uh, you know, a, a lot of metadata about this artifact that we've saved. So uh, I just want to quickly demo one of the cool things that we can do with artifacts is that you can actually uh, you know, print the code that is the minimal set of code used to reproduce an artifact. And um, just in this example here, because this is the training data, uh, this is the minimal set of code, and we can notice that actually all of the plotting code that was not necessary to gen generate the chain the generate the training data is actually not included. And this is because um, when LinearPy is doing its code tracing, it understands uh, you know what pieces of code are necessary to generate uh, what other pieces of code and what the dependencies are, and it understands that the graphing code is not necessary to produce the training data. Um, yeah, so basically for the rest of this uh, notebook, we're going to be using the training data that we just saved, and we're going to go through and train a linear regression model um, to try to predict the housing price uh, in our training data, and we can also go through and evaluate our test data, and, you know, cool, model looks great. We're actually going to be doing the same thing here. We're going to be saving the model as an artifact as well. Um, so here's where some of the really cool magic happens. Uh, because we have these two artifacts saved, we can actually uh, create pipelines that will, um, you know, basically reproduce the process that we've just gone through in this notebook, right? So we can say uh, we want to, you know, reproduce the training data and the model um, as a pipeline, right? And uh, I'm actually going to switch this over to Airflow right now. So the a uh, key API call to do this in uh, LinearPy, the uh, open source project, is LinearPy.2Pipeline. And all we have to do to, uh, all we have to provide in order for LinearPy to understand um, how to break this pipeline down is this clean data housing and linear model housing, which is basically the names of the two artifacts we've uh, created beforehand, right? These are basically the tags that tell, tell us that the pipeline should contain two steps, one of them to uh, create the training data and one of them to create the model. So I'm going to run this real quick. Um, perfect. And after we run that, we can actually see that there's a couple of files that show up. Um, and I'll actually go through a, a couple of these in more detail. So the first one I want to go through is the module file. This is actually um, the file that contains sort of like the task breakdown. Um, this is basically the refactoring that Doris mentioned earlier that we're capable of doing. So once again, we have a function here to get the uh, the, the data from the uh, you know parameterized data URL, right? So this is basically 
a way for us to um, you know, switch out a new, a new raw data set in order to produce a new training data set. And once again, this uh, code is all cleaned up and nicely refactored. Similarly, the code for uh, actually training the model based off the training data is also in this module file. Um, it's all cleaned up, you know, automatically generated, no user intervention required here. And then um, some helper code to basically run, run these functions. Uh, the other one I want to point out, or actually there's going to be one more file after this, but the, uh, one of the other files I want to point out is the DAG file. So this, because we specified the framework to be Airflow, is automatically generated as well, uh, basically uh, in a way that Airflow can understand, right? So we're doing an Airflow import DAG. We've defined some tasks here that Airflow will be able to understand and pick up on. And then we have a DAG definition and a bunch of Python operators and specifying the dependencies. So this is basically the file that you know, Airflow can pick up on immediately as a DAG file and will be able to run. And then uh, actually the last file I want to talk about here, which uh, let me just run this here, is the requirements file. And then let me just really quickly here, make sure we grab the right file name. Uh, doo -doo -doo. One extra one, perfect. Um, and I also want to talk a little bit about the requirements, requirements file because one of the really annoying things about building and running pipelines is um, dependency management. Uh, making sure that you know your pipeline has the same set of dependencies as you know whatever the heck was run in the notebook, right? And um, LineAPI is also really good at this. It actually uh, captures the uh, imports and the dependencies as you go along. And when you create a pipeline, it's also able to uh, you know generate this requirements.txt file, which has all of the uh, the minimum set of dependencies needed to you know run the tasks in your pipeline and uh, you know, what versions uh, you're using in your original notebook. Um, yeah, so uh, one of the great things I did for this demo is that actually um, I set up the Airflow uh, to automatically pick up the DAG files. So actually this DAG is already here. Um, and uh, you know, just to demonstrate what this looks like and how easy it is to actually submit the DAG once LineaPy has generated it, I'm literally just gonna click run here. And we can click on the DAG and we can see basically the setup task, the uh, training data tasks that we broke out, the uh, model uh, the model training task, and then the uh, teardown task. And we can see that this pipeline runs successfully. And then um, just to kind of show some of the di diversity of uh, pipeline frameworks that we have right now, I'm actually going to go through and uh, you know just do a quick run through of some, some of our other uh, frameworks that we support. So we also support Argo right now. Uh, similar deal, it's super easy to switch between frameworks. Uh, you just have to uh, change the framework parameter for uh, in the two pipeline call. And uh, with Argo, let's see, I should uh, go to Argo, DAGs. Um, and I actually wanted to uh, demonstrate Argo for another reason, which is because Argo is a Kubernetes-based um, pipeline framework, which actually means that you also need to build the image that is going to be used to run the task. And uh, this is actually something that uh, for Kubernetes-based frameworks, LineaPy is also really good for. So in the Docker file here, um, it'll actually give you uh, instructions on uh, how to build this Docker file and how to tag it so that the uh, the DAG that's generated uh, will be able to pick up on it. So, do do do. Um, this might take <laughs> take a little bit of time, unfortunately. Go go go. Yeah, I have a question. So, how yeah. does the so this magic that you mentioned? Like, I can clearly see you do a lot of stuff under the hood. So, what is that? How do you do this? Do you have maybe some articles that describe uh, all this magic that happens under the hood? Doris, why don't you take this question? I think this is more in your wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we have a technical paper on this. We also have presented the technical side of it in an uh, AWS meetup talk, so I'm happy to provide a link to that. But fundamentally what's happening is we're doing a lot of program analysis by actually breaking down the code into the AST and then uh, instrumenting the AST and matching it to the runtime uh, values for the variables at the same time to be able to build this graph 
that allows us to understand the dependency at a very fine grained level. And then we can traverse this graph to be able to extract out the necessary parts to any artifact and use that air down code to then uh, use as the basis for creating these pipelines. So there's also an automatic program generation that wraps uh, these raw bits of code into the pipeline frameworks. Yeah, pl please send us a, a link to the video and we'll include it because I think many of us will be interested in watching that. Absolutely. And I think the Docker build finished, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, and so right now we can see that in Argo, there's uh, no workflows uh, yet. And so submitting here is uh, also super simple. So uh, basically for all the frameworks that we um, support, it's as simple as running the uh, DAG file, or in the case of Airflow, just moving the DAG file to the correct place. So in this case, I'm just gonna run the DAG file and um, it's gonna complain that there's no secrets found, which is okay because we can see here in our Argo setup, the workflow has, uh, or the pipeline has immediately shown up and it's uh, also capable of being run here. Our Argo uh, locally does, does some weird stuff, but yeah, we can see basically um, same thing, the pipeline has run and actually we can even see in the Argo UI that um, it has produced two outputs, which are basically the uh, training data and the uh, model as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much time we have and whether or not we want to go through uh, another uh, framework. But uh, yeah, so right now, LinearPy supports five main frameworks. Um, They're uh, Airflow, Argo, DVC, Kubeflow, and Ray. And uh, we actually have documentation and examples on how to set up and uh, dem basically run through this demo for each of the frameworks as well. So you know, in anybody interested can go click through that and run it themselves as well, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm wondering how many people are working on this project? The small and mighty team of five right now. Five. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, cool. That's not uh, that small. Some open source projects have just one contributor. I see. Yeah, it started <laughs> with very humble beginnings, and we expanded the team a little bit. So, what are your plans? Our plans for uh, Linear Pi right now is we are working on a complementary platform solution to bring in a couple of the missing pieces that really require infrastructure to better support, right? So for example, a lot of these components, they're right now constructed directly from raw data science code. The reality is that data scientists really don't need to repeat the same workflow over and over again, right? They're like very templatized steps for data pre-processing for model training and all of these things, right? So the platform solution brings a, a mechanism for us to catalog these things and for it, uh, for data scientists to be able to easily check them out and do development, but also this is another nice way for them to have, to build more robust and reliable data pipelines as well, right? Because these uh, reusable functions, these components, they have, they can be vetted by their data engineering counterparts. So, you know, out of the box, they have uh, highly reliable components that they're playing with. And of course, the other piece is right now, LinearPy does generation of data pipelines, but you also need somebody to be able to run the pipelines. There are many great frameworks out there. The question is, how do we manage the pipeline execution with respect to especially, you know, the outputs that are constantly being generated and the versions, right? <clears throat> excuse me, and also the relationship between all of these different pipelines. That's uh, also something else that really requires a hosted backend to be able to do this well. Uh, in terms of Linear Pi itself, and then we're <clears throat> looking to build more integrations. We're looking for the community to contribute. Like a, a lot of these integrations actually came directly from the community. So we're very grateful to our community contributors. And then the other piece is that um, right now, some of the more advanced language constructs in Python, such as control flow, uh, aren't well supported. So supporting those, being able to really break those down and, and build graphs thoughtfully around these constructs is on the roadmap as well. Yeah, quite nice. And you said that uh, some integrations came from the community. So if somebody from the community, somebody who 
who is listening to this, watching this right now, want to contribute? How do they go about that? Yeah, so um, reach out to us directly. We have a Slack. You can find the Slack on our GitHub repo on our uh, website as well, linearpy.org. That's usually the best way to get our attention, to just post the message in general. I think that uh, it's been tried and true for many of our contributors. Like we're really good at being able to jump on uh, any of these requests. And we'll work with each of our contributor to figure out, you know, what are your interests and what are your key strengths and how do we match your skill set to what we need, right? So for us, the three contributors, um, they all came in with like very open minds. Like one of them had extensive experience with DVC, so he was able to contribute um, an integration there. And another contributor, I think he was a lot more open to, you know, whatever we're doing. So he was able to come in and work with us directly to contribute an Argo um, integration. So really, we please just reach out to us on Slack or on social media, and then we will figure out, we'll work with our contributors to figure out uh, what works best for them and how does that fold into our roadmap. Do you have uh, good first issues? Good first issues. Currently still, to be perfectly honest, still working on that. I think some of them are tagged on GitHub, but really I think the best way is to just reach out on Slack and we'll work with you. Do you plan to take part in Hacktoberfest this year? Potentially. It's too early to say. Yeah. yeah Start up from like that far. <laughs> in eight months or? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of time to plan this, right? Okay, um, show us how to give you a star. Oh yeah, show us uh, how, show how to give a star, super simple. Yeah. Uh, GitHub.com, <laughs> Linear Lab slash Linear Pi. Uh, click up here, as you can see, I've already given her own repo a star. Um, but yeah, otherwise normally you just click here and make sure the yellow star shows up. Yeah. Okay. Well, now the last question that I ask everyone, and since there are two of you right now on this call, each of you will need to answer that. So do you have any advice to anyone who's watching this? Oh, good question. Um, I think advice to uh, folks who are you know, doing data science engineering out there, I think they should really keep an eye on how do I make sure my pipelines keep running? Right now, there's a lot of buzz around that, hey, you know, we can create pipelines more easily by putting notebooks directly into production, right? But really, what's really important for productionizing data science isn't like, can you cross that bridge, but rather, can you stay in production well, right? Like right now, there's a lot of brittleness that ends up pulling data science out of production very quickly. I would say for me, yeah, similar thing. Um, you know, this is a fast changing space, right? The basically the interface between data science work and data engineering work. Um, so for everybody in this field, you know, keep an open mind. Um, yeah, look out for cool new things. I mean, that's why I'm here working at uh, Linea as well, right? Um, so yeah, just stay curious, stay excited. Okay, yeah, that's excellent. Thanks a lot for the demo. I am really impressed by the magic you're doing. Um, and yeah, this is really cool. Thanks for showing this and thanks for making it an open source. Okay. Great to have you here. Thank you so much for having us, Alexi. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you too.